I think it was probably two episodes ago. I was using a calculator and I made a mistake. And because I was doing everything digitally, I thought, well, I can just sort of correct it in my head and we're going to come out with the right answer. Nobody's going to notice. Well, one of the viewers noticed. I got to thinking it's probably other people noticed too. Anyway, here's what happened. If you remember, we were trying to measure and find out what is the thickness of this real thin plastic that came with our uh, Tamiya masking tape. And, <clears throat> excuse me, what I did was we had taken the 16 plies and measured it and concluded that the 16 plies were approximately five one thousandths of an inch thick. And what I did was I went five ten thousandths. Well, I, I knew that. Okay, so I went uh, zero point zero zero, and then I put one too many zeros in, and then the five. Okay, so I had five ten thousandths, not five one thousandths. Okay, so I, I realized my mistake. Then we divided that by 16 equals and I was going along here 10 you know tens hundreds thousands ten thousands well I knew that was wrong uh, I knew I'd made a mistake because I, I'd worked my way up here the three is in the is in the hundred thousands slot so in my mind I just moved the, the decimal point one to the right and came up with the, the correct answer and I'm, I think you, I remember saying something to the effect of it's around three ten thousandths of an inch, even though it's reading three one hundred thousandths of an inch. Okay, <laughs> enough. I, I beat this to death again, didn't I? Okay, one of the viewers commented and drew that to my attention. Another viewer commented and said, what you need is a multimeter. Now, please, friends, do not make me have to reshoot this scene. I hate doing retakes. I meant micrometer or micrometer. I do know the difference. We'll be using a multimeter a little later in this episode. Sorry about that. I'll get it right eventually. And I commented back something to the effect of, uh, yes, but I don't have one yet. Let's have a box opening. That's what is supposed to be in here. I don't see why it won't be. What's this dangerous goods thing on the side? I guess because it's got batteries. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we used to, when I was in the shipping business, we used to have dangerous goods stickers too, but I don't believe I ever saw one like that. Okay. So I came up with the right answer, but I came up with it wrong. Does that make any sense? Well, it does to me. Okay, it looks brand new. It doesn't look like it's a return. It still has what appears to be all the factory stuff. A couple of extra batteries. And here we go. Now I have the opportunity to either get a digital one or the analog one. Now the analog ones I know how to use. You, you use the analog ones, at least I'm calling it analog, but it may be to me the opposite of digital is analog. The analog ones work sort of like this. You read the one scale and then you add to it what you get off off of the the other scale. And with the with this one with the analog of the micrometer or micrometer depending on how you want to say it, you have three readings. You have the the first reading and then you add to it the second reading and then you add to that the third reading. 
and uh, yeah. Now I was just editing out that last scene right there and I was thinking, you know what, I'll bet you there's somebody watching right now that does not know how to read one of these uh, analog uh, calipers. And uh, you know, one of these is easy. You just you just press the button, make sure it's at zero when you start out, and then you open it up, and and you read what it says. Okay, so that that's reading uh, ninety six thousandths of an inch right there. Um, all right, but let's let's say we wanted to measure this uh, little old Canadian dime here. Um, I'm going to swing the camera around in a minute so that you'll be able to see, and uh, at least I hope you will. Okay, now this dime will not be the same diameter at, at, at one side as it is at the other. It's going to be slight, slightly different, so we'll measure it afterwards with this, but don't be surprised if there's a slight variation. Okay, I'm going to swing the camera around. I have flipped this scene upside down. reason for that is it'll be easier for you to read. It was right side up for me, but upside down for you. Now it's right side up for you. The perspective might look funny, but it should be easier to read. Now this is a very old caliper. It used to be my dad's. And I can remember when, when dad bought this, and I can even remember the store he got it in. And uh, he gave it to me about five years later, and I've had it for, I'm guessing, oh, it must be, uh, well, I'm trying to think of where was I living the first time I used it. It's got to be, uh, uh, oh, about 40 years old. I think I had it just before I built the Titanic in Lusitania. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's very old. And it's in inches. You could you could get the metric ones at that time, but, but back 40 years ago, everything was more or less inches at that time. We Canada had not gone metric yet. Um, all right. Well, yeah, actually, they, actually they did. They had just gone metric. But they didn't go metric when Dad bought this. Anyway, enough information that you don't need to know. Now you will see that you have the two the two scales here, the inches, all the way up, and then you've got this other thing on the bottom. And you wonder what is that all about? Well, that's what you use to get your get it up to a ten thousandths of an inch. Now I meant one thousandths of an inch, not ten thousandths of an inch. Oh, okay. So our dime is stuck in there. And you will notice here on the zero, okay, it goes zero, one hundred, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it is seven hundred thousandths of an inch, but not quite seven twenty-five. So the next the next segment right there would be seven twenty-five, then seven fifty, seven seventy-five, eight hundred thousandths. Okay, so now what we do is we look along here. And we look along to find out where can we find one of these lines that's going to line up perfectly with one of the other lines on here. And one of them will, and the rest won't. Now, I've already, I've already sort of found it. As luck would have it, it's the 10. You notice that the, the 10 line is lining right up with the 2. Okay, so what we do then is we take 700 plus 10 is 710 thousandths of an inch. Now, just for the fun of it, we'll we'll measure this time with with the digital caliper. You'll see how much faster it is. But it might, like I say, it might be different because we won't be measuring in the exact same place. Okay, I'm hoping this is going to work now. I've already zeroed this thing. Okay, can you read that? It should say 708 thousandths. So there's, there's a difference of two one thousandths of an inch. But like I say, that's probably because we're not measuring in exactly the same place. Um, anyway, this of course is so much faster. I'll use this one here ten times to the other one. Okay, I think I'm probably going to have to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to clean this up here. It's got all kinds of grease and oil and everything um, on it here. Yeah, I'm going to have to clean this up and, and then we'll uh, put a battery in it and uh, we'll try it out.
Okay, three volts. Okay, once again, it's a good thing that I can edit out the nonsense while I was trying to fight my way into this thing. Now we'll get the multimeter. I'll try and get it so you're not going to have reflection. Remember we cleaned this thing up so it should work pretty good first try here. Alright, uh, I do believe the jacket is the positive. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's assume no. And it's supposed to be about 3 volts. Probably be a little more. Brand new battery. Okay, 3.37, almost 3. Point, almost, yeah, almost 3.4 volts. That's pretty good. And I was right, the jacket is the positive. See? And now, what, what I mean by the jacket, I mean the, the outside. Okay? That's the uh, key to get the battery cap off. I'm noticing there's a, <clears throat> a little bit of flashing on there. Oh, flashing, I feel right at home. Okay, I can tell by the way this is shaped, the uh, positive has to go against this one right here, and the negative obviously has to go against that one. Okay, so why can't I get that in now? That's the problem here. It should go like this. I'm going to have to turn the camera off and work out, pick this up and look at it. Okay, I, was, I had the cap upside down. Okay, to me the letter should be this way but I guess okay I see what they're doing all right that makes sense now uh, okay we got it oh it's on okay off on zero well we don't want to zero it like that okay piece of paper here I've already wiped this all down. This was had some kind of a grease on it. Oh, it was kind of interesting. Uh, the manual. Where? Let's see if I can find it here. All right. Uh, where did I read that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right there. I probably have to zoom in, but you take my word for it. It says, uh, "Clean the surfaces with gasoline or alcohol." <laughs> gasoline. Oh, all right. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is we're just going to very gently move this in until you can hear the, the slip clutch. Okay? And then we'll just pull it out. Okay, that should help to remove any excess grease that's uh, between on, in the anvil here. Now this, this uh, I've discovered is just is just something that you can so you can turn it quickly, okay? It's not like this one turns it ten times faster than this one. It's just that it's easier to grab onto. But then what what you do is when you get it down to the place where you, it's almost going to touch whatever, then you use the other one 
and you can't over tighten. That's the idea of it. Okay, so I guess the, what we'll do is we'll got to try and hold it here so you don't get reflection. We'll turn it on. Uh, we will zero it. Now we will back it out. Now this is actually the first time I'm using this. Let's take our little piece of plastic here. Is it going to stay there? No. Where's my tweezers? Okay. Now we'll try and get this so there's no reflection there. Now the idea is that when I take the take the one that has the ratchet or the slip glitch, this should be around three ten thousandths. Let's just see what happens here. Okay, obviously I've done something wrong. It says nine ten thousandths. Hmm. I'm gonna check into that. What could have happened there, I wonder? I couldn't have been that far out in my calculations. Just double check and see if we're still at zero. Yeah, it's at zero. Well, in all likelihood, I did something wrong. Okay, now we're at eight ten thousandths. Um, I wonder what I did wrong there. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Let's see if I can uh, get some of the excess paint rubbed off my deck that I put on there yesterday. Yeah, that was terrible. Now, those of you who know me and have watched my workshop videos, you know I just can't leave something like this alone. Sort of like the quest for the perfect shine in pen turning. I just kept at it and at it and at it. I thought it was never going to end myself. Anyway, I just can't leave something like this alone. Okay, you know, things like that really irk me. Um, I now have uh, 32, 32 plies here. Okay, that's on zero. Okay, 32 plies is 11, 11 thousandths of an inch. Now what did, what went wrong there? 11,000 so here we go again on now this time we're going to just do it we're going to do it right okay 0. 0.00 0. and for 11 thousandths I'll just go 11 not 1.1 1. 1. okay now I think we've got it right there Now, divided by 32 equals. Yeah, we're, we're coming up to about the same thing. <clears throat> uh, three ten thousandths. Uh, hmm. Say three, three and a half. So, so this should have said, you know, either three or four. Not what it said. Is there something wrong with this? Or is it possibly that some places this is thicker than others? Maybe there's a bit of a kink there. Well, I'm going to play around with it. If it's if it's not accurate, I'll, I'll, I've got a feeler gauge down in the in the workshop. I can sort of check it against that. But we're going to do that later. Like I said before, let's see if we can uh, do something with our our paint.
Now, once again, I can't leave something like this alone. And I am sure that some of you are just yelling at your screen because the answer was so obvious. Okay, I think I'm holding this so that everybody can see it. And I was a little bit worried. And why, why could it be so much of a discrepancy, like about three times? Anyway, I was thinking about it and I realized I had it set to millimeters. Now it's set to inches. I haven't tried this yet. Okay, we're reset. We're going to back it out. Now another thing that you've probably picked up on is the fact that I like to do everything sort of live, just the way it happened. No retakes, even though sometimes I might make a fool of myself. Yeah. There we go. Three thousandths of an inch. Ugh! I did it again. I meant ten thousandths, not thousandths. It was almost at the 3.5, but I think I kind of maybe squashed it a little bit. Okay, it's working. Yuppers, that wooden deck is starting to look better all the time. Stubborn old Canadian here. Whoops! Well, I hope that doesn't show. And what I'm trying to do is kind of feather it out a little bit here so that there's not going to be any real, anything really distinctive from where the plastic, bare plastic, is into where the paint was and I think that if it if it does show up on the uh, uh, you know that the deck tan rather uh, does sort of have a little bit of discoloration it'll almost look like weathering at least that's my hope uh, one of the viewers made the comment do you think you're getting as much paint on your model as on the real hood <laughs> And I, I got to admit, I don't know why I'm laughing. I, I don't know why I'm always putting it on too thick. Um, I don't know. Now I've been sort of experimenting between the, the isopropyl and the Windex. And I would say that the Windex seems to be a little better. What I'm hoping to do is get any that's, you know, in the cracks because I want the detail of the planking to show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing everything around here and uh, come at, the, at this side from the other side, if that makes any sense. I pretty much got it here, about as good as I can get it, I think. Um, it's funny, some places it's, it seems to come off good and some places it doesn't. Like, like for instance, right here it came off really good, and on this side it isn't. Now, now maybe it's because the Windex was fresh right there. Maybe I should... Uh, No, it's not making any difference. Okay. I think I pretty much got it feathered out on this side here. I know you can't see everything on this side very good, but we'll swing it around and... Got a nice breeze blowing through here today. It's coming in the back bedroom windows and you can see it blowing my... 
it's in the coming in the back and blowing out the front. Be a good day to paint, wouldn't it? But you know what? We're not going to be able to paint today. I'll work on this a little bit yet, and then I think I'm going to call it a day. Okay, I have swung everything around, and uh, this is that area here that I was saying it was coming off for some reason a lot easier than this side, and yes it is, and I don't know why. Um, I'm going to continue to work at it just a little bit here, because uh, it's only going to take a little bit to finish this up the way I want it anyway. In the meantime, thanks for watching. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.